Hello there YouTube, Devin here again, and uh, today I have a video that was uh, requested by Duncan M. Uh, he wanted to see a Polish WZ2000 uh, compared to an uh, American ECH. Um, now we're going to start off this video uh, by letting you know that really comparing these two helmets is like comparing apples to oranges. Both these helmets are from different... Um, eras in helmet technology and they are both made out of different materials in different ways um so we'll uh explain some of the pros and cons to uh a lot of these uh to both of these helmets and uh we'll compare them to each other uh first off as you can see the the polish wz2000 here is uh much shinier um it's much taller um it only has three screw holes on it uh, much like a um, C Canadian CG634, uh, whereas um, the ECH is much lower profile. It has five screw holes, four for the suspension and one for the night vision, um, as well as being lower profile, uh, though not as streamlined of a design as the WZ2000. Now, um, the ECH came out in 2014, uh, the WZ2000 came out in 2000. Uh, this only had a service life of about five years before it was replaced by the WZ2005, which is a much better helmet design. It has pretty much the same liner as this, uh, as the WZ2000, but it's made out of a uh, better material and it's a different shell shape, uh, which allows for better uh, integrated communications as well as offering more coverage. So, at not much more of a weight. It's I compare it a lot to like a shoe berth, uh, but because um, it does look a lot like a shoe berth as far as the overall profile goes, but it has a much more um, longer ear base. So this way, so instead of just having like the normal like kind of pasgat like ear pieces that stick out that are like that big. You see, it goes almost all the way around the helmet. The whole entire skirt is flared out instead of just the uh, ear pieces. Uh, so that makes there a lot more room to work with as far as getting stuff under your helmet, as far as winter gear and communications and everything like that. Which is why this helmet was uh, replaced uh, fairly easily uh, and quickly. Because it um, there was a lot more suitable designs even when the WZ2000 came out. Because it came out at a very aggressive transition period for composite helmets it came right near the end so like to the early 2000s is when the u.s transitioned from the pasgat to the ach which is a major leap forward uh it's when a lot of countries upgraded from steel to kevlar and poland didn't go from from steel to kevlar they went from kevlar to kevlar but it was really kind of a subpar helmet um, design they could have done a lot better with it now uh, some some of the interesting things about uh, uh, the WZ2000 is they seem to be um, made out of very coarse Kevlar weave you can see it under the paint here how coarse the weave is um, I don't know why they use the shiny paint on it either uh, it does have a nice uh, rubber rim on it it's about as thick as an ACH it's 3A rated so it is going to have a worse rating uh, as far as protection goes than uh, the ECH um, it's something uh, about the poles that they use that not a lot of other countries use uh, is they like to use uh, Phillips head screws uh, on their helmets now I'm not a fan of that because a lot of countries use flathead screws because it's a lot easier to change your helmet bolt if you have like let's say not a Phillips head screwdriver you can use a piece of a magazine you can use a coin you can use pretty much anything to change a flathead screw whereas it's a lot harder to find something in the field if you don't have a Phillips head screwdriver to undo a Phillips head so that's just something I've noticed I don't like about uh, most Polish helmet designs is they use the Phillips head screwdrivers. It was like that on the WZ-93 and it's like this on the WZ-2000. Uh, I've seen some examples with the Phillips head screws on the 2005 and some examples with like the flat screws and some examples with like the seamless screws where you need like a special wrench uh, just like the uh, Schubert. So, um, but... 
This helmet uh, has pretty much a um, copy of the German Schubert liner. It is uh, seems to be cheapened though. It has a mostly uh, cotton chin strap uh, instead of nylon, which means this will break down a lot faster, uh, will wear out faster. It has kind of a uh, mostly cotton uh, blend net up at the top, whereas the Germans used the nylon as well. Uh, so this cotton's gonna hold a lot more stink and everything like that. Um, instead of using the little, uh, just like on the German Schubert, instead of using the little um, cylinders of plastic, they use these kind of zigzags. But all in all, it's pretty much overall the same design. It adjusts the same way uh, and everything like that. They have uh, a little bit different chin strap where it has this uh, tail that comes down in the back and then the D-ring instead of just being the D-ring uh, mounted right to the, the liner and stuff. And then uh, it has the kind of seatbelt release buckle, just like you would find on a uh, shoe berth, except this one is a lot chintzier and flimsier feeling. It's not as nice as the German one, uh, but I don't really know the reason for that. I think it came down to cost or something. Like I said, this helmet was not around for, for very long. It was only around for five years before it was replaced with another design. Uh, it does have a very comfortable chin strap, though. I like it. Uh, other than the fact it's kind of a pain in the ass to dust, uh, to adjust because this has the ability to like swivel and it does hang down pretty far so it bites into your neck compared to a lot of other uh, three point chin straps. It comes down pretty far and it's not padded so this can bite into the uh, your nape pretty easily in my opinion. Um, I do like the chin cup on this though. It's that smooth leather instead of that suede which means it's not going to take stink is easy and it's going to be a lot easier to to take care of with the smooth uh leather on there instead of the suede uh so i do like that it's not something i've seen a lot of other helmets a lot of other helmets tend to go for the suede type leather because it keeps it from moving around as much uh, especially when you're sweating um the ech uses the pad system and uh takes pretty much every standard ech uh, four point chin strap, uh, whether it be X nape or H nape. Uh, this is the one that it came with though. Um, kind of a suede lined H nape and a suede lined chin cup on a, what appears to be like ops core style headlock system. So, um, it'll take any pads. It has the same kind of velcro to sit up an ACH will and everything like that. Uh, really the only downfall of the ECH is that it's heavy. It's heavier than an ACH. Um, weight isn't good, but it offers, it's a trade-off, really. Uh, the ECH is going to offer improved protection over the ACH, but it's going to cost more weight. So it's not a lot more weight, but it's still more weight. And um, that weight on your neck is, is definitely felt. Even though it's a, even if it's only like five or six ounces, it's still, you're still going to feel it in the long term on your neck. Um, these two helmets, as you can see, uh, are pretty, pretty similar to when I did the, uh, ACH comparison here. The WZ2000 is pretty much as thick as an ACH because it is 3A rated and it's Kevlar just like the ACH. The ECH is much thicker. Uh, it's probably about 33% thicker than the, uh, ACH or the uh, WZ2000 here. Uh, it's hard to tell with the rims on the helmets because the rims are wider than the actual shells. Um, but just take my word for it so uh, hopefully uh, this answered all your questions Duncan and uh, gave you some insight on some opinions and stuff like that that I have uh, towards helmets um, if any of you guys actually have anything um, any other helmet comparisons you'd like to see uh, I'd be more than happy to do that for you but uh, just bear in mind uh, the ECH is going to be better than pretty much all 3a kevlar helmets because it is improved materials and it's one of the newest designs so um that's pretty much just going to be the outcome of every every video uh if that's what you're looking for i'll still do a visual comparison if you wanted to to compare uh sizes and shapes and stuff like that as you can see here the the profiles of the wz2000 and the ech so i i'm more than happy to still make the videos if you want to see something compared to an ech um but just note the ECH is going to be better protection wise than most most other Kevlar helmets out there. So um another another thing, uh one of the couple of the helmets that I'm having a very, very hard time finding, uh that I'm looking for, I'm actually looking for a Finnish Kevlar helmet. So if you have one or know somebody that has one, 
or where to get one, uh, leave me something in the comments. So or a link to the place if you know where they have one or anything like that. And I'll see you, or if you do have one, and we'll see if we can work something out. I'm also looking for like a Swedish uh, M90, a uh, Hijalm 90 helmet. Um, preferably the older model, uh, but I'll take either or. Um, I wear about a size 58 uh, in European, so 58, 59. Uh, so if any of you guys have either of those two helmets or you um, know where to get one, or if you can help me out in getting one, uh, I'm sure we can work something out or something like that because I would love to receive some of those. Um, but hopefully, thanks again, Duncan, for suggesting this video. And uh, hopefully this um, has uh, covered everything you want to uh, see in this comparison and uh, some information and stuff like that. Um, thank you all so much for watching. Um, and hopefully I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.